Welcome to Like the Rain with Patrick Kitely, where we share the Word of God personally, practically, powerfully, prayerfully, and prophetically. Let's do this. Hello, family. Welcome to Like the Rain with Patrick Kitely. I'm so glad to be with you here today. Today, we're going to enter into some prophetic preaching and declare the word of the Lord. I've been in prayer and just waiting on God for this season, and I believe that God has a word for you. Like Solomon said, a word in due season, how good it is. Proverbs uh, 29 verse 18 says, without a prophetic vision, with no prophetic vision, the people cast off restraint. And so there's something about having prophetic preaching. There's something about having a word from the Lord. And so today I want to talk to you about what I believe in this season as we've entered into 2022 is a bridge moment. We are leaving the past behind and we're stepping into a brand new season in God, 2022, T-O. It's a time to step into, to your purpose, into God's will for your life, into the thing that seems like it's been delayed, it seems like it's been on hold to step into that thing. So let me prophesy to you as I declare the word of the Lord today today. And so I'm going to be reading from two scriptures and then we're going to share. Uh, Philippians chapter 4 and verse 1 from the New King James Version says, Therefore, my beloved and longed for brethren, my joy and crown, so stand fast in the Lord, beloved. And then I want to go to Exodus chapter 14, verses 10 through 14 in the New King James Version again. And it says, and when Pharaoh drew near, the children of Israel lifted their eyes and behold, the Egyptians marched after them. So they were afraid and the children of Israel cried out to the Lord. Then they said to Moses, because there was no graves in Egypt, have you taken us to die in the wilderness? Why have you so dealt with us to bring us up out of Egypt? Is this not the word that we told you in Egypt saying, let us alone that we may serve the Egyptians for it would have been better for us to serve the Egyptians than we should die in the wilderness. And Moses said to the people, and this is so powerful, Do not be afraid. Stand still and see the salvation of the Lord, which he will accomplish for you today. For the Egyptians whom you see today, you shall see again no more forever. The Lord will fight for you and you shall hold your peace. Lord, I thank you for this time and your word. And I just pray, Holy Spirit, that you'll just move. You'll speak in Jesus name. Amen. Now, as you are taking notes and I encourage you grab a pen, uh, grab your phone, whatever you can. Take notes in your context, in the context of who you are, your calling, your anointing, your talents, your giftings, your perspective. Take notes because God's going to speak to you and is going to release concepts and ideas and freshness inside of you in this time. So you know me, I like to rhyme. So here's my rhyme. In this very hour, God is going to shower a new measure of his supernatural power in your life supernatural power in this very hour. That's what God's going to shower. It's supernatural power. You see, power is the ability to do or to act. And there's something about supernatural power. It speaks of the capability of doing something. And I believe that we are in a time of power. Psalms 1 10 and verse 3 says, thy people shall be willing in the day of thy power. There's something here that we need to understand. First, there is a day of power. And second, God's people are willing in that day to move with the Spirit of God. And then third, we need to know that this power comes from God. It's the the day of his power. There is manpower, but greater there is God's power. Acts 1.8, in the beginning it says, but you shall receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you. And so we are going to speak about power. Are you ready for a season of power? Because it seems like, you know, the the old song, let the weak say, I am strong. Let the poor say, I am rich. I'm telling you, this is a season of richness. This is a season of blessing. This is a season of power. Somebody receive that because prophetically, I declare to you that the power of God is advancing. And in this season, this season, you are going to see the power of God moving in and through your life like never before. Do you believe it? (laughs) Because this type of power requires two things, faith and action. 
See, in order to process this divine transaction, it's going to take some faith and action. James said it like this. He said, faith without works is dead. What does that mean? It means if you believe it, then you will do it or else it means nothing. See, that means if you say to Jesus, who's standing out on the water outside of your boat, shall I come? And Jesus replies to you in your cozy boat, come, that means come. That means step out of the boat and onto the water or else you will never find out. (laughs) When you take that step, you're never going to find out and see the power of God. When you take that step, how the power of God will congeal the waters together and therefore making something that physics says is liquid into something so solid that it can hold you up as if you were standing on land, although you're miles from the shore in the middle of the sea. You see, when faith meets action. You will see that you can travel on the sea. You're able to do things that defy the laws of nature because the God of nature over nature, let me say, is in charge. Faith and action. Say that with me. Faith and action. Faith and action means you go with God internally and externally. Everything about you leans on, trusts in, and moves with God. Faith and action. You see, one of my favorite historical figures is Joan of Arc. When you study her story, you'll find out at age 17, she led the armies of France against the English. And one afternoon, as the armies of France were approaching the city, they saw in a distance tens of thousands of soldiers manning the barricades at every elevation. And Joan of Arc Arc told her later, she said, immediately, now, now, we must take them now. And the leaders were horrified at her boldness and passion to win this battle against this seasoned foe. After all, she was just a peasant girl leading an assortment of men from France. And she said, well, I intend to strike at the heart of the barricade. And they told her, if you go in, not one man will follow you. Simply replied, she just looked back and she just simply replied, I won't be looking back. The passion of Joan of Arc changed history because she went forward and the army went with her. Why? Because it takes faith and action. Now, as we look at this verse in Philippians, I want you to hear this phrase, I won't be looking back. You see, Paul is talking to his loved ones. He, he, you have to listen to his language. He, he starts out with double descriptions of the church in Philippi. He says, my brothers and my sisters, we are family whom I love and long for. There's a deep connection. In chapter one, he already told them he longed for them. And here he goes again saying, I long for you. I can't wait to be with you. I can't wait to break bread with you. I can't wait to sit down at the table and see your face and hear your laugh and and, and be there when you cry. There's something about this connection that we have. He says, I long for you, my joy and crown. And the word joy in the Greek speaks of the experience of gladness. When I am with you, I experience gladness. I experience joy. And then the word crown speaks of, Estefano speaks of a victorious celebration because the enemy has been defeated. It's a crown of victory. And so can you imagine? He says, you know what? Here's what I think about you all. I think that you give me gladness. I experience gladness and you are my crown of victory. And Paul says to them, we are united. We are linked together. We are joined. We are of the same spiritual DNA. We are part of the same spiritual lineage and heritage. And I'm talking about a people whom I love because our destinies and our histories and our journeys are intertwined. This is all a setup. People came from different places. They gathered into this one place. They were come from different continents and different nations and different cities, but they gathered gathered into this one place. And it was not a human coincidence. It was a divine setup. You see, sometimes we have to look at our lives and realize that these are not human coincidences. This is not happenstance, but divine setups where God works and he uses different methods to get you where he wants you to do what he wants you to do. It's all a setup. And so Paul connects the dots. He brings it all together. He uses words that convey that it's not by power and it's not by might, but by my spirit, says the Lord of 
of hosts. This is the Lord's doing, and it's marvelous in our eyes. See, sometimes you got to look back at your life and say, this is not by, by, by power. This is not by might but by the Spirit of the Lord. Hello, family. I just want to take a moment here in the middle to thank you so much for tuning into our podcast. We're just having an amazing time sharing the Word of the Lord all over the place. Um, If you can just take a moment just to subscribe uh, to this podcast as well, we want to ask you if you could share it everywhere that you go. You can also follow me on Instagram and Facebook. And as well, if you go to our website, patrickkitely.com, there we have a blog and we're just sharing more on what God is doing and more revelation and what God is speaking in this hour. And also I want to ask you just if you can click the donate button and support the ministry as we go forward to the nations to share the word. So as you go into the second half of this word, I just pray that God's just going to speak to you and he's going to stir you up and uh, I'm excited for you to hear it. So God bless you. We'll see you real soon. And when you get to Philippians chapter four and verse one, it's like this bridge verse between, you know, some, some things that have been going on and where we're going. You see, at this moment in the book of Philippians, you know, you look in chapter three was kind of this recentering word on the prize. Jesus, what are we doing? What is, what is, what are we in this for? Why are we spending this energy like this? Because the prize is Jesus, his fame, not mine, his goals, not mine, his accomplishments, not mine, his name, not mine. It's all about him, him, not me. And then you get to chapter four and verse one, and Paul moves us into the dimensions of power. And this is where I believe prophetically we are in this moment. The power to capture and maintain longevity in our prosperity, to prosper in our thoughts and in our emotions and in our relationships and in our finances and in our businesses and in our dreams, to prosper in the Lord, not just for a season, hear me, but for a lifetime. Because there is a power source in God to accomplish all these things and more. But between concepts, there is a bridge, a bridge between Jesus, the prize, and God's power in this next season. There's a bridge between striving and thriving. There's a bridge between pressing and resting. And we need bridges because God is a bridge building God. And the purpose of a bridge is to connect two bodies of land separated by water. We need bridge verses. We need bridge words. We need bridge moments. We need bridge conversations. We need bridge sermons to connect us from one season to another, one thought pattern to another, one paradigm to another, one move of God to another. We're moving into a fresh move of God. Bridges are crucial, and without them, we are stuck. If you come to the end of the land and you don't have a bridge or recognize a bridge and don't appreciate a bridge or are afraid of a bridge, then you are going to get stuck. Some people, some movements, some nations have come to the end of a time frame and are not doing what it takes to cross over. Let me prophesy to you, this is a bridge moment. And so Paul bridges this letter with some key words. He says, stand firm in the Lord. I want you to catch this because this is where I'm going. Stand firm in who? Myself? No. In somebody else? No. In what? (laughs) An ideology? No. Stand firm in the Lord. You see, this is a season where we're going to cross the river. This is the season where we're going to take Jericho lands and Canaan lands. This is a season where we're going to possess our inheritance. This is a season of saying, I won't be looking back because if you cross over this bridge moment, you cannot afford to look back because if you look back, then you'll be tempted to go back. Oh, I heard somebody now. If you look back, you'll be tempted to go back. But in this moment where we have to add some action to our faith. This is the moment that we're in. There's a story of uh, Hernan Cortez in 1519. You might have heard this story before. It's powerful. He took 11 ships, 500 soldiers, 
100 sailors, and 16 horses to the Yucatan Peninsula to take the world's richest treasure of gold, silver, and artifacts and jewels. It had been held by the same army for 600 years, and many, many armies had tried to take it, but no one ever succeeded. And when they arrived, Cortez gathered everyone to the beach, and they grew quiet, waiting to hear what Cortez would say. And he said, you go here, we will go there. And if arrows start flying, meet at the coconut stump. We're out of here. That's what they thought he was going to say. But that's not what he said. Instead, he leaned in. <laughs> you know, you have your daydream of what the speech is going to be. You think it's going to happen one way. And all of a sudden, things switch. They turn. And Cortez didn't say that. Here's what he said. He just said, burn the boats. And they replied in shock, excuse me? And Cortez repeated himself, burn the boats, torch the boats, start a fire. He says, if we are going to go home, then we're going to go home in their boats. And on their leader's orders, they burned the boats. And on that day, they fought really well, I bet. For the first time in 600 years, the treasure was taken. Why? Because their choice was take the treasure or die. There's no going back. There's no boat options. I told you, I won't be looking back. If you cross over in this bridge moment, you can't afford to look back because if you look back, you'll be tempted to go back. And that's what was happening when we read the scripture in Exodus 14. <laughs> the Israelites, they looked back. And what happened was they complained to Moses. Why did you bring us out here in the wilderness? Are you trying to kill us? We would rather go back and be slaves in Egypt than to die out here. Yappity yap, yap yap, no faith and no action, just overreaction. When you have no faith and no action, then it turns into overreaction. But Moses, he, he, he just, he stays, he stays relaxed and he, he tells the Israelites, he says what, what, what Paul told the Philippians. He said, stand still, stand firm. See, I got to talk to somebody here in this season because you have to tell someone in this particular moment where there is this tantalizing temptation or there's a demonic draw or there is a counterfeit leading or a Luciferian luring or a pride-filled persuasion to move outside of what God is trying to do. No, no, no. Stand firm. Stand still. This is what Moses tells them because he says, guess what's going to happen? stand still and see. It's all about what you see now because God's moving you. When you move into to, to, to a place where you step out in faith, that's when you begin to see. We walk by faith and not by sight, but when you walk by faith, you will see God move. You will see him work on your behalf and you will stand still and see the salvation of the Lord. And he says, the Egyptians that you see today, you will see no more. This is powerful stuff. Just stand still, stand firm. And so Paul in Philippians tells the church that this is not a time for you to be tossed about by winds and waves and doctrines and divisions and distractions of all kinds. It's not time for you to be to be moved by what's going on in the world, what's going on in medicine, what's going on all over the place. I need you to stand firm. Time is short. Stand firm. Life goes by fast. Stand firm. The world is changing. Stand firm. You see someone out there, you need to find a place on the water where God says to you, come and stand firm. Don't look down. Don't look at the wind. Don't look at the waves. Don't look at everything around you, but stand firm. You see faith plus action equals supernatural transaction. Don't sink. Stand firm. Don't blink. Stand firm. Don't shrink. Stand firm. Don't look around at the elements of nature that would work against you. Stand firm. This is a faith and action type of thing. When you learn how to stand firm when the winds blow, when the waves toss, when the enemy comes against you, stand firm when the answer is yes, stand firm. When the answer is no, stand firm. When it's a good day, stand firm. When it's a bad day, stand firm. None of these things move me. When you, when you don't know what's going on, stand firm. When you know what's going on, stand firm. When you're surrounded 
surrounded by people who love you. Stand firm when you're all alone with people who hate you. Stand firm when you're free. Stand firm. If you're in prison, stand firm. When things are going your way, stand firm. When things are not going your way, stand firm. When things happen right away, stand firm. When things are in delay, stand firm. When Delilah's and Potiphar's wives and Lady Hudats dangle their whatchamacallits in your face, stand firm. When Samson comes sweet talking for some boots knocking, guess what? Stand firm. Moses gave us the reason to stand firm. And here it is. Do not be afraid. Stand still. Stand firm and see the salvation of the Lord, which he will accomplish. I got to talk to you here for you today. For the Egyptians whom you see today, you shall see no more. For the Lord will fight for you and you shall hold your peace. Just stay calm. Relax. Don't worry, Bobby McFerrin. Be happy. Be quiet. Shh. Don't talk yourself out of this. Relax. Breathe. Don't make any sudden moves. Don't make any crazy decisions. God still has this. Stand firm. Why? Because God still has this. He has your life. He has your health. He has your wealth. He has your marriage. He has your kids. He has your job. He has your times. He has your money. He has your education. He has your future. He has your hope. He has your peace. He has the nations. He has the whole world in his hands. Let me pray with you because the power of God is coming upon you right now to stand firm who and to move with faith and action because faith plus action equals supernatural transactions. Lord, I thank you for each one that is listening to this right now. And I thank you, Lord, for a supernatural power to stand firm in these days because we are going to see you move in a mighty way. Lord, we honor you. We love you. We thank you that you are with us. You take care of us through every season of life, the good, the bad, and the ugly. And so today, Lord, I thank you right now. Just lift up your hands. There's a fresh anointing of power being released upon you. You shall receive power when the Holy Spirit comes upon you and he comes upon you in this moment. In the matchless name of Jesus, we pray. And everybody said, amen. Hey, everybody, we love you. I just want to give you an opportunity. We're launching out our ministry here with this podcast, and we're going to be doing different sermons and posts. Look at us at Instagram. Look at me on Facebook, on Twitter, on all the different formats, TikTok, all of them, and uh, putting stuff out. And also, if you want to donate and give and bless the ministry that we have, just go to patrickkitely.com and go to the donate page and just uh, send us a love gift and uh so into the ministry, so into the ministry. I always like to say it like this. If you give God the best, then the rest will be blessed. And so, so into the ministry so that we can keep going forward. This is our full-time gig here now, and we're just believing to see God do amazing things. But I want to tell you, we love you, and we're excited for 2022. Expect more because we're going to be releasing a whole lot more of prophetic words to you, and it's going to be amazing. So we love you, and we'll see you real soon.